global commodity markets have plunged in recent months, dragging down the price of rice, wheat and corn by around 50% from their summer peaks. The scale of that shift has seen the food inflation scare that had gripped both developed and developing economies last year disappear. But United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has told business and political leaders at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos that the world has yet to escape an underlying food supply crisis. You know, I've been urging world leaders, particularly leaders of industrialized countries, that they should never lose sight of this issue. This is the issue and challenge for most vulnerable people, one billion most vulnerable people in the world. Uh, I welcome all these uh, stimulus packages uh, they should uh, make, but at the same time, they should pay serious and due attention on the plight of uh, many uh, most vulnerable people. Governments around the world have so far pledged an estimated $6 trillion in the last year to bail out broken banks, guarantee debt, and unblock frozen credit markets. Josette Sheeran, executive director of the World Food Programme, says it would take $6 billion, just one-tenth of one percent of the global economic rescue packages so far, to stop the worst forms of human suffering this year. And she says the deepening world recession and uncertainty in global markets makes 2009 a crucial year for action, especially as the number of people she expects her organisation to feed this year tops 100 million. I mean, we're witnessing a fundamental breakdown in confidence in global food markets where nations still are not sure they can get enough food at an affordable price to be able to say they can feed their populations. Stocks are still at an all-time low. Now this is a winnable problem, but if the presidents and prime ministers of the world do not focus on it, we will not stay ahead of this curve. In many countries, the food crisis is ever-present, and huge volatility in prices over the last 12 months has pushed millions more people into hunger. Amitabh Sadangi runs International Development Enterprises India, a company that supplies small-scale farmers with pump and irrigation kits that cut water usage by 50 to 70 percent and boost crop yields by up to 40 percent. He says the food crisis has not gone away for the small farmers who account for 70 percent of agricultural production in India. In my opinion, no. The food prices is stabilized, but today 200 million people in India still go hungry. UN Chief Ban says it is crucial for government and business leaders to see the problem holistically. Food crisis, climate change, water scarcity, mm -hmm. energy, they are all interconnected issues which we must address comprehensively. With 75 million people added to the ranks of the hungry last year and food prices in some of the world's poorest countries still double what they were 12 months ago, there are plenty of reasons for action. I'm Nick Edwards in Davos for Reuters.